Hello friends, welcome to the video series on interview question for SQL PL SQL developers. In this video, we'll see about what is an error or exception in PL SQL and how to handle the exception. In subsequent set of videos, we'll see about what are the types of exception, what is pragma exception in it and what is race application error function and what is SQL RRM and SQL code. All these things are very much specific to exception related interview questions. In a single line, if I have to answer what is an error or an exception, it is nothing but an abnormal termination during a normal execution of a program or abnormal situation during a normal execution of a program. Broadly, we can categorize this error or an exception into two types. One is like a compile time error and another is like a runtime error. Typically, we'll call the runtime error as an exception. First, we'll see one simple example. From there, we'll try to understand uh, how to handle the exception part. So here is a simple function which is simply taking a two input variable and it is just returning the division of a number. During compilation time, if in case if the compiler is not able to identify the objects whatever we used in the program, for example, you would have used any function or a, a table or view or any other database objects within your uh, function or a procedure. If the compiler is not able to resolve that name, then Oracle will throw an uh, compile time error. For example, in this case, let me just uh, put some junk value here and let me try to compile this. Now it is throwing a compile time error because it's not able to identify what is this number df, sdf, something. That is why it is throwing an error called in the identifier uh, number sfds must be declared. So this is called a compile time error. Whenever a program is uh, not able to compile, its state will be set as like invalid and we will not be able to execute the any PL SQL code which is in an invalid state. Let me just correct this. Okay, in fact, before that, if you want to see the um, compile time error messages, you can just check in the uh, user underscore error data dictionary or all underscore errors data dictionary. So, uh, which will clearly say what is the error message and in which particular PL SQL code this error has occurred. Okay, let me just correct this now. Okay, now that the program is compiled successfully, Okay, but we are not very sure whether there is any uh, other logical error because logical error typically will not be able to identify uh, during the compilation time. That we will get only during the runtime that is at the execution time and that is what we call it as a exception. So whenever an exception raised, that particular program will not get uh, terminated gracefully. Instead, it just throws the exception to the calling program. So the problem here is that uh, whenever an exception raised, it just throws the technical details or technical error message information to the caller. Uh, that won't be much meaningful from a, a caller perspective. For example, a UI program is calling a DB program and the DB program is raising an exception and that exception is thrown to the UI program and it won't be nice to display that particular uh, message as it is in the UI. So instead, we need to handle in the exception block Rather than throwing an Oracle error message, we can just throw a more functional or a meaningful information to the UI. Okay, now let us try to execute this particular function and we'll see whether we are getting any exception or not. Okay, let me just try to pass uh, or let me try to call this function with an input like 1 and 2. So the uh, output uh, what I'm expecting is 1 divided by 2. So I'm just executing this program as expected it is returning 0.5. Perfect. Suppose if I'm passing a, uh, the second parameter as zero, so the program will try to uh, divide one divided by zero. As we can see the program here, it, is just, it will just try to compute the first parameter divided by second parameter. So in this case, what will happen is that the program will not be able to compute or ex execute the statement one divided by zero. So rather than, um, gra rather than graceful termination of the program, the program is now throwing an exception called divisor is equal to zero. So this is this is a kind of an unexpected situation that happened during the execution of the program. So this is this is about more basics of the what is an exception or what is error or uh, what will happen when an exception get raised in the program. Now we'll see how to handle this particular exception. So here is the PL SQL block structure as we know that. Uh, the block structure has like three sections. One is like a declaration section, another is like execution section, and the third one is like exception handling section. So whenever we want to handle that, in fact, this is not a mandatory section. So if we want to handle this exception, we need to use this exception handling section. 
So the exception handling section will start with the keyword exception and in and whatever the exceptions we want to handle, we can just handle as part of this particular section. Now we'll see four different program and we'll see how to handle the exceptions. So here is the first program. So what I'm trying to do, I'm just trying to, okay, let me uh, give, okay. So I'm trying to exec, uh, execute an anonymous block, which is just going to fetch the information about one particular employee. Okay. Let me just execute this code. Yes, the program successfully completed. There is no exception because it is able to find a record in the employee table with employee number 7788. Suppose let me just give some um, employee number which is not there in the particular employee. So whenever we execute a code like this, Oracle will not be able to find a record with an employee number like this. So it throws an exception called no data phone. That means it's not able to find a record which matches the employee number equal to 9999. That's why it's throwing an exception. Instead of leaving it like that, or instead of throwing this particular message to the caller, we can just handle using the exception handling block like that. Exception, when others, then rather than just simply throwing this message, I'm just printing a meaningful information here. Put underscore line, let's say, employee record found okay let me now re-execute the program now if you see instead of throwing that exception the exception is handled in the exception block and it is just printing a more meaningful information so this is one example which is specific to one type of exception called no data font let us see one more example now so here is another uh, program where I'm trying to fetch the name of or details of the employee into a variable called v employee details uh, variable, which is of an employee row type. So technically this variable can hold only one row of employee, but whereas this particular select statement is going to return more than one employee because I just put a, a department number equal to them. When we try to execute this, obviously this will throw an error because uh, the variable can hold only one row, whereas the select statement is returning more than one row. So that's why it is uh, returning an error saying that exact fetch returns more than one row. Same way we can handle this error using the exception handling block. So let me just give uh, some meaningful information here. More than one employee matches. So let me just clear off this. Yeah. Now if we execute this program, uh, rather than throwing an exception, it is just giving a more meaningful or more functional uh, a message. Let us see one more program. So here's a simple program. In fact, this is uh, exactly the uh, same function what we uh, saw earlier, which is just going to return an error message, exception called device array is equal to zero. Okay. So in fact, here also we can use the exception. We'll, we'll clearly, uh, we'll give some error, uh, meaningful information like uh, invalid input, something like this. Okay, let me execute this program. Now if you see, rather than throwing an exception, we actually handle the exception and we are just printing more meaningful error message. We'll see one more program. I am trying to insert an employee with an employee number 7369. In fact, this particular employee record already exists in table and employee number is a primary key in this table. So obviously when we are trying to insert this statement, it will throw an exception because we will not be able to insert duplicate record. So when I execute this program, we are getting an error saying that unique constraint violated because we will not be able to insert any duplicate variable. So exactly uh, the same way we can handle using the exception handling block. We'll clearly say uh, like employee number already exists. Let me just execute this program. Now if you see, rather than throwing an error message, we are now printing more meaningful uh, error message. So the program will get terminated gracefully and more importantly, it is just giving more functional and meaningful information, which can be more readable rather than a, a more technical and a, uh, Oracle oriented error message. If you have learned something new, uh, please like this video or subscribe and stay tuned for more new future videos, interview questions, SQL practical question and concept videos. If you have any questions, uh, you can post in the comment section or you can drop to this mail ID. Thanks a lot for watching this video.